I have a confession to make. I really hate the Lost Box. I know it's a really good deck. I know it's a budget-friendly deck. But holy cow, I am so, so tired of fighting that deck. And I think at this point, it's if you're playing PTCGO, you have to tech against the, the Lost Box in one way or another. And if you're playing against Shadow Rider, or playing with Shadow Rider Calyrex, maybe you've got the League Battle deck. Maybe you just really like Shadow Rider. The answer against the Lost Box might be this. I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And before we get into that, I just wanted to plug uh, a very quick thing. I am fundraising for extra life which is a, a fundraising effort to raise money for the children's miracle network of hospitals and would really appreciate it if if you make a donation it all goes towards a wonderful cause 100 percent of the proceeds go towards the children's miracle network of hospitals as part of the celebration here i am going to be hosting a 24-hour marathon on november the 5th on the twitch channel you can watch it enjoy we're gonna be playing a ton of games having some really awesome and weird snacks and all sorts of other stuff and if you donate at oh wrong button if you donate at one of the three reward tiers you can get some of the cool prizes here prints of my spray paint art pictured here so i'll put the link in the description of the video or you can hit the link that you can see on the screen and and now let's go back to the deck list all right espion vmax what makes Espeon VMAX so special? It's not necessarily its HP, not necessarily its retreat cost, but its ability Solar Revelation that prevents all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to all of your Pokemon that have energy attached. This means if you are you have Pokemon that have energy, psychic energy, it's just energy attached, they can't get knocked out by Star Requiem, they can't get hit by Sableye's Lost Mine, if you're fighting against the Reggie deck, the Regice move that, that stops Vs from attacking, it cancels that out too. And just having a 1-1 one, one could be the difference you need to get over the top. And now this, this Shadow Rider deck looks very different from what you would get in the League Battle deck or what you, you might have seen online otherwise. This is a fairly new archetype. Shoutouts to Curly71 who placed in 6th at the late night 60 with this exact deck list. And let's talk about what they have here. They've got two Arceus V into V star. Of course, you're gonna want to start with this, use Trinity Nova, hit for 180 damage after the double turbo energy and star birth, get your two cards, set up the Shadow Rider, set up the Espeon if you need it. And we've also got a 3-3 line of Shadow Rider to accelerate energy and to hit pretty hard. Once you've got a whole bunch of energy on the board, Shadow Rider can hit harder than Arceus can. So you might want Shadow Rider for big mid to late game massive KOs. And not only does having Arceus help out in terms of accelerating energy early on, it gives you a two prize attack option that could potentially force your opponent to take eight prizes in terms of having to knock out an Arceus and two Shadow Riders in order to win the game rather than having to knock out just two Shadow Riders. So really like the inclusion of Arceus here. We've also got some other support in terms of Pumpkaboo for knocking off Path to the Peak and a new addition, Radiant Gardevoir, which takes, which makes your Pokemon take 20 less damage from opposing Pokemon V. This deck before didn't really have a Pokemon V, a uh, Radiant Pokemon in it. So Radiant Gardevoir, really nice addition. With support cards, we've got four Fog Crystals, a Heavy Ball, two Hyper Potions. This deck also comes with two Double Turbos. It's a little light on those, but you can totally use Double Turbos either to attack early with Shadow Rider because its move is Colorless Energy, but also you can attach it to either Shadow Rider or Arceus or Espeon. Use the Hyper Potion to pop it off and heal 120 damage, which is pretty nifty. We've also got Ordinary Rod, Pal Pad to get some of the supporters back, two Trekking Shoes so we can keep moving through the deck, especially if we get path and we get stuck, Tool Scrapper, two Switch Cards, because you're definitely going to want to pivot Shadow Rider in and out when need be. I really like the Skaters Park inclusion here, where 
you can, when you retreat, you actually put the energy back into your hand rather than into the discard pile so that you can then reattach it with Shadow Rider and reload it to wherever you need. Pretty mindset. nifty addition. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> weird. I'm not live right now, but we just got a follow. Dragon Air Jordan, thank you so much for the follow. Um, four Ultra Balls to find the Pokemon you need. Adventurer's Discovery, two copies of those, which gets you up to three Pokemon V of your choice. Really handy for getting multiple Shadow Riders or the Arceuses and so on. One Avery to disrupt the bench. This can be very helpful in the Lost Box matchup, force them to get some Compies and, and Greninjas off the board. Um, this is really good for the Regigigas match as well. Two Boss, one Marnie, two Professor's Research, one Thornton, which can allow you to get some cheeky plays where you switch a Shadow Rider, an Arceus, or an Espeon into the other thing. Um, unfortunately, we don't get spoilers. We don't get to use the Thornton in the set of matches, but um, this is a really nifty card to experiment with. So two Choice Belts, two Double Turbo Energy, and 11 Psychic Energy. So having played this deck, and like I'm recording this after the matches, um, I think it's a really interesting archetype that definitely has some mileage against the, the lost box decks. You probably, you don't need any more than a one, one Espeon. I think the thing I kept getting stuck with was I really would like at least one more Arceus V in this deck, just so I had a higher chance of starting with it at the beginning rather than a shadow rider or something else. And um, in, in this set of matches, you will definitely get to see Espeon in action, though it may not have worked ultimately the way I wanted to, and not necessarily Espeon's fault. Uh, but if you get to the end of the video, you will see I'm still salty about it. But anyway, let's go get to these matches. I have not seen this. Co I've played this game thousands of times. I've never seen that coin before. Okay, this is not ideal. Not an ideal setup. Okay, but we will try. We will try. We can at least attach to Arceus. We do get an out to the Shadow Rider VMAX. And potentially we are one card away from, from landing an Arceus V star. So this isn't all bad. And we do get Impo... Okay, we've got an Empoleon. And we like that because Empoleon doesn't really hurt our deck at all. It, it kind of shuts down Gardevoir, but that's that's about it. What else are we up against? Yeah, this is this is a Zorark deck. So this is a kind of scary deck. It can accelerate damage in a hurry, but it all I find it to be kind of bricky. TBH. And let's see what they end up with. And unfortunately for us, we kind of don't have a lot either. And if anything, hitting it right now would only make it stronger. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a concern of mine here. Yeah, we really need the Arceus V-Star right this second or we have already been out-tempoed. Thankfully, they only get the Gapejaw Bog now. So I think the, the gamble we have... Okay, they're going to do their Void Return and probably go into the Bibaro. Oh, they're going to go into the other Zorak. Okay. If we don't get Arceus V-Star here, and we don't, here's my one Gambit before... I'm going to attach to myself and, and hope for the best. We do get a Marnie. All right, that's a that's an out that potentially could get us to the promised land and we get it. All right, we get the energy, we get the we get the Arceus. Unfortunately, we're going to get rid of we're going to get rid of some fun stuff, but we will actually score a KO here too, which is pretty sick. So, let's go and pop Starbirth and go, um, let's go Crobat, actually. Crobat to draw a bunch of cards, and then Professor's Research to draw a whole bunch of cards after. 
And that might be kind of redundant because we could go and grab... Ooh, okay. Um, do we actually go into the... A second shadow... A second Arceus here. No, let's go lean Shadow Rider. I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling very brave here. Uh-oh. My concern with this deck, this particular configuration of Shadow is that Arc Shadow Rider is a high energy deck. And this deck actually runs a little low relative to other Shadow Rider decks, but let's see if they can accelerate enough energy here fast enough to make this work i'm guessing here comes the gengar yep here comes the gengar hopefully they have a i hope they don't but they'll probably draw into a damage pump here too spread out a bunch of energy Uh oh here comes the boss's orders what are we knocking out here knocking out yeah, they'll probably get the knock on this shadow rider and that is kind of sad now there's a couple of ways we can go about this. Do we? Yep. They're going to get the knock. And now this is hitting for 250. Oof. 9, 12, 13, 15. Do we think Shadow Rider has enough energy? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going for it. We're going for it. Here's why I'm going for it. Here's why I'm going for it. One, um, let's get rid of that Gabe Job Bog. Two, let's Underworld Door to the other Shadow Rider. Three, let's put on a Choice Belt. Four, let's Avery. And I don't think we can accelerate to... Yep, so that cuts down their damage potential by a lot. Um, we will Underworld Door to ourselves here. And do we have any more energy in the deck is my million dollar question. There is energy in the deck still. So I'm going to put that energy onto another Arceus. And let's go and swing. Is this going to be enough to KO? Yes, it is. 280. Whew. That was quite the gambit. That was quite the gambit right there. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we'll take those. We'll take those. And now they're, they're kind of boned. I don't see a world. Yeah, if they... If they, they Marnie us, yeah, that GG. <laughs> we'll take that. We'll take that. We'll take that. Okay. So, um, it was great to not have, to get Arceus knocked out instead of a Shadow Rider. I don't know if they would have done enough damage on that, that hit. I mean, we can take a look at the log and, and see what happened there. We did 280 damage with that Max Geist, which is amazing. And it was a little bit of a gamble because we weren't necessarily sure that we could get enough energy on the board to do that. Um, okay, it did. They knocked out the other Shadow Rider, so it wouldn't have mattered. But um, having the the Arceus in there does throw off the prize race a little bit. Shadow Rider can, can still hit, it hit quite hard. And in that particular scenario, we were able to accelerate enough energy to knock out that Zorark in one go. And and Zorark is a horrifying deck and I don't it does like now that I've been playing it a bunch, it does have issues with consistency here and there and sometimes getting the energy out on the board or getting the damage on the board, but the wombo combo of being able to accelerate enough energy and the Avery. Oh, the Avery was so clutch to also weaken the amount of damage they could do on the next turn. Oh, chef's kiss. So we'll take that. GG's. Ooh, a, a, a fellow Shadow Rider connoisseur, I see. Excellent investment. I wonder, they've got Mew Sleeves though. So I wonder if we're actually playing against Shadow Rider. Maybe we're playing against Mew. 
let's see. And hopefully we can get some good cards. I... <laughs> it never happens, does it? Never, ever, ever. Crowbat into to nothing. Now, I guess... Like, this isn't entirely the worst. Like, if we go into... We get rid of ugh, the Palpat and the Hyper Potion. And we go into Arceus. And then on the next turn, we use Adventurer's Discovery and get some Arceus V-Star things. Then we should be okay. Unfortunately, Espeon is not going to help us in this match. I, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get the Espeon match that really showcases what it can do. But when I was first testing the deck, I had the Espeon match where I was playing against the Giratina version of the Lost Zone, locked in Espeon towards the end of the game, and then their Giratinas couldn't do the, the big one hit KO. It was awesome. And I haven't had that opportunity to do that since. They are going to get their Shadow Rider charged up here. And what we're going to do is, ooh, the Ultra Ball could be interesting. We are going to get Arceus V-Star, Shadow Rider, Shadow Rider. Yeah. Okay. Down, down. Arceus, we pop. And we go, please tell me there's a switch and the double turbo and we start to accelerate and we knock out the Cresselia along the way. We're swinging for a solid 180 and we're going to hold on to this fog crystal because I want to turn that into energy to charge up a shadow rider here or to use underworld door. So we're going to Ultra Ball away Skaters Park and and one other thing. Turn that into a, a VMAX, convert the Fog Crystal into a an energy, and then draw some more cards. And hopefully that will be enough. I love the Shadow Rider deck, and I think part of it is my nostalgia for when I started playing the game. And this was the deck that everyone was playing and unfortunately for me by the time i only got shadow rider like a couple of months ago and it was way past its prime at that point okay they're gonna marnie us i don't blame them by that point the deck had far fallen off now it's kind of resurged a little bit with the league battle decks and i still think it's a especially if you're just starting out a pretty good purchase but ooh, we got a mewtwo build so they are going to be able to accelerate oh, whimsicott i don't know about this i don't know about this I don't, I don't know i don't know if i can roll with you on that okay so um let's go and turn one of these and I'm going to get rid of the Switch 2, which might be a controversial decision. I might want to roll with Arceus here. I don't know, because Arceus is only going to drop two prizes, which is something that is intriguing to me as a potential option. Now, how much damage? It, this is going to hit for 180. And yeah, I think we take two prizes off the rip with we just knock out the luminion and take two i don't think they're gonna accelerate fast enough to yeah bet and you know what i'm gonna put this arceus down just in case and that might be a mistake but we will find out <laughs> Okay, one, and something to... Okay, Pumpkaboo's not ideal, but as long as that training cord stays out there, at least we can... We can grab that energy that's going to get knocked off of Arceus 
We also have to be mindful that Mewtwo's V-Star power can do 120 damage to everybody. Like all of these V Pokemon. And we don't have a clean out to that. Articuno V, I guess. I don't... I don't necessarily agree with with this person's deck composition here. This feels like, are they going to boss up the Crobat? No, oh, no, nope, they're going to smash the Arceus. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's, um, that's a good move. That's a very good move. And I can't do anything about that right now. That kind of sucks. Well played. well played okay now what for your next trick what would you like to share with the class yeah i don't know one one shadow rider to accelerate and draw cards to support this host of secondary attackers i don't know if it's enough Because, yeah, once we knock out this Mewtwo, and hold on, 30, 60, 90, one second. I don't think we can knock out this Mewtwo in one hit. Um, so this is really bad, actually. <laughs> We're going to need, like, a godlike... Actually... Okay, so if they knock this out, we do have a play. We do have a potential play. We do have a potential play. And this is going to take two energy. Okay. Hopefully, it lets us... If we... Okay. They're just going to go into the Shadow Rider. That's... F that is what it is. Um... Okay. What if we do this? Okay, this isn't exactly what I was thinking, but we can do this instead, right? And then we we retreat into the Arceus, we get our energy back, and we reattach this energy with Underworld Door, and we can draw a whole bunch of cards, right? And we can do the Tool Scrapper to remove both of these balloons. You get to stay here. And I will Underworld Door again. Actually, you know what? Do we Pumpkaboo to get the the Skaters Park out of there? Because they can do some shenanigans like that too. Yeah, actually, we're going to do that. So we'll take that Stadium off. I don't want them to have that option. I will... Mm. Or do we... I think we Marnie now. And hopefully we can find another Pokemon to then Underworld Door to. And we we don't, but at least we can Underworld Door again. And we are running out of, of Pokemon to attach energy to. So that's something we need to keep in mind here as well. And I think, yeah, we can put down Radiant Gardevoir to take hopefully less damage. And we swing again with Shadow Rider, and we attach energy to this one. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, we do not get Marnied here, and we'll be fine. At this point, we, we just have boss for game, and then it's over. It looks like they are are down bad here a little bit. They are going to get Crobat for a whole bunch of more cards. And maybe that's it. But all we need is to not get Marnied and we'll be fine. I will say shout outs to Arceus. Like I hate. I've been very reluctant to showcase just Arceus plus this as a, a deck idea because it's just so unimaginative but Arceus is so good, right? 
I think one of the biggest problems with Shadow Rider is that you're just filling the deck with, filling the board with three prize Pokemon and you can just get blown out <laughs> really easily losing the three prizes, even with some of the tricks for healing and stuff. But having Arceus as a, a two prize attacker and being able to accelerate the board with a whole bunch of energy does help quite a bit. And just enough to skew the prize race so you're potentially forcing your opponent to take eight prizes instead of you know, six. Okay, it looks like we are... Yeah, they're just going to go into Cypurge. I don't even think they have to discard much of anything, which is a, a smart play for them. For us, though... Okay, we'll go with the gold one. The gold one doesn't get enough respect. The gold cards in this game as a whole don't get enough respect. I think they look gorgeous in real life. We have no more energy. So sure, we'll bench the Espeon. Thank you for helping out. We're going to boss up this Shadow Rider and smash it for a cool 280 GGs. All right, little bit of a, a different take on on shadow rider with their deck i don't hate the idea of mixing up shadow rider with other pokemon and definitely not don't hate the idea of mixing it up with two prize pokemon because yeah shadow rider is just here's all four three prizes it is very much a liability i don't necessarily hate the idea of having mewtwo v star in the deck we've covered shadow rider mewtwo before it's my favorite way to play mewtwo i don't necessarily even hate whimsicott here as you know shadow rider whimsicott that's a that's archetype that people did run back in the day would i i mash them all together like this probably not that's kind of where i would would draw the line there but yeah mixing shadow rider with other two prize pokemon not a bad idea we'll take that one ggs okay what about this one I still feel like we haven't had the match that showcases everything it does. And I, I find that it's no, it's kind of hard to get the one match that showcases everything, especially with just the luck of the draw and, and stuff like that. But so far we have, I don't know what order these matches are going to be in, but we did get a... How do we keep getting Pumpkaboo into nothing? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well. Okay, they started with Radiant Charizard. And that's kind of bad for them too. We do lose, lose our Thornton. We do get some more shoes. Can we get... Yes. Okay. I can live with this. I can live with this. We'll get rid of a Hyper Potion. We'll get rid of a Skater's Park. And we'll put down an Arceus. And we can figure out the rest later. Okay. So we'll see what deck they're playing. If this is... This is the comfy deck. This is the comfy deck. Okay. At some point, we're going to need to get Espeon set up. And this is actually kind of oh, kind of surprising that they they've bricked this hard with this deck because I find this deck never bricks <laughs> when I'm playing against it. But hey, the I was due, right? Cuz this might actually be bad for the video where if I just knock out that Charizard on the next turn, then I don't get to show the Espeon. So let's see what happens here. They get the Comfey. Okay. And they're going to escape rope into the Comfey to do Comfey things. And and that is, that is their prerogative. If we had Lost City... Oh, man. I would be licking my lips at the idea of having Lost City as a stadium here to knock out that Charizard on the first turn. Oh, oh, that would be the dream. Now, do they have all, do they have enough? They've already got two pieces. They're going to get a third. Are they going to get the fourth into the Cramorant? They do lose a Manaphy, which doesn't really matter in this matchup because we have no way to snipe. I think that we really need to get, 
Espeon on the board. Probably this turn. And maybe... Yeah, this might not even be a Shadow Rider match, right? It might not. We go and we just fight with Arceus. They drop two prizes. Uh, actually, we do need we do need Shadow Rider to S to accelerate energy to all the targets that could get hit. Like the the Pumpkaboo here is a a flight risk, and we're gonna get <sighs> Escape Rope again. Wow, they're just throwing down all the... They started with nothing, and yeah, this is what I mean. They start with nothing, and they just go into all the comp phase all at once, and all of a sudden, they've got six cards in the Lost Zone already. Are you serious? And they get into a battle VIP pass? Yeah, this pump boo's dead. This pump boo's dead. And it might even be too late for us to set up the, the Espeon at this point. It's crazy what they've been able to do here. And they've gone all Comfe. And Cramorant's going to hit for 110. And the Sableye's on the board already! The audacity! Okay. Okay. Ooh, do we knock out the Charizard? Do we knock out the Sableye? I think we, I don't think we have a choice. We have to get set up here or we lose. And I think we, I think we grab these three. And hopefully they don't run Path to the Peak. Hopefully they don't. And we will Starbirth. We'll get our, our double turbo. Ooh, hold on. We get our double turbo. And do we have to get SP on now? We might have to get SP on now. Oh gosh. Okay. And then just hope that they don't do anything next turn. Okay, this is kind of a risk, right? So I'm going to put the energy on... I have to put it on both if this is going to work. And we're going to put a little more energy on the Espeon in case it gets dragged up. And we do get Shadow Rider here. That's great. I don't see a world where they they accelerate and they, ah they could, they absolutely could accelerate enough at this point if with enough Mirage Gate. I don't think this deck runs Mirage Gate though. Oh, here comes with the bench sniping. I think the play here is we boss up and knock out the Charizard. And the Sableye, we hopefully shut off with Espeon. And then they're going to they're gonna have to scramble to get Charizard back or, or get a Path to the Peak or something. I don't know if their deck... I have not seen much in the way of anti-Empoleon tech in their deck. At the very least, they will not knock out either... Lost the Echoing Horn. Oh my goodness. And they're going to put Pumpkaboo on that too. And they're going to... Okay, what do they lost back? Oh, they just take the Stadium out so that they can... They can start sniping. Yeah, they're more than ready to start sniping. Okay. So, I think if I were them, I'd drop the 10 on... Imp drop the 10 on Espeon. But let's see if... They must know, right? They must know that the Espeon has the sauce. They're going double Sableye. Okay. They're leaning all in on the Sableye when really I just want to knock out the Charizard because once... Okay. And they're going to go and take a, a cheeky prize here 
on the Pumpkaboo. And that 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 kind of is what it is. And they probably run a whole bunch of Echoing Horns. I think this deck runs up to three. And that could keep them in this game for an extended period of time, which does make me sad. So yeah, I would chip the Espeon and the Calyrex if I were them. Well, okay. That's fine. That's fine. They softened it up to 30 specifically so that... Um, specifically so that... Radiant Charizard can knock out Arceus with one hit. And what we're going to do, knock out the Radiant Charizard and accelerate some more energy. We'll do three or two energy here. And maybe we could have put the other ones down. But now we pray that they don't know <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that Espeon can't do the thing. Oh, and they're just going to keep bringing back this. And if anything, that's probably... If they can just do six and then the rest doesn't matter. How many prizes can they cheese from us that way? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what can we do here? I think we just keep swinging. And sure, we just say bet. Because, yeah, we have shut off the Sableye at this point. Do they have enough horns? Do they have any more horns? They need to get Radiant Charizard back, which theoretically they could. Theoretically they could. And what will they're gonna go for Manaphy? Um sure. But I don't think they run anything to stop the then yeah, they're gonna go for a third echoing horn. This is brutal. And I think what we have to do, because the Arceus is still in Radiant Charizard range here. Oh my goodness, it just keeps just keeps happening. We have to retreat. We'll get rid of this double turbo. And we need. We'll max Geist for... Yeah, I'm not going to put any more targets on the board. I don't want to. Yeah, maybe we... <laughs> Let's see if they have it. Like, Radiant... Do they have the pieces? We have been able to slow down the Sableye, and we took out the Charizard. Can they get the Charizard back? And they do get the Clara. Oh my goodness. This is horrifying. If they're getting two more hits on with the Charizard, we're in a terrible spot. And they do go. And I think we have to go Espeon here. Shoot. Um... Yeah, we have to switch to Espeon. Okay. Espeon won't get knocked out, but we can't we can't knock out the Charizard though. Okay, that might be enough. So here comes the Charizard going to swing for oh. Going to swing for 250. We're still going to be able to knock it out, I think. How many kicks at the can? Oh, no, they're going to cross switcher us. Oh, come on. No. Dude. 
that was the match we wanted. Uh, that was not the outcome we wanted. Shutting down the Sableye helped, but holy cow, they had the cross switchers at the end. They set up, we were a little too slow to set up the Espeon and they softened up our, our Arceus enough so that they could bring the Charizard back. Damn it. That was a really good game though. And Espeon did keep us in that closer than, I wish we had some hand disruption or something to shake their hand out and we probably could have taken that but um yeah we're gonna have we got the match at the end we didn't get the outcome we wanted but i think yeah what ultimately killed us i've had a, a couple seconds to breathe there i got really mad at the cross switchers and the radiant charizard um what ended up killing us there was the pump kaboo and they had so many echoing horns three echoing horns to keep in that game but otherwise like we could have won that like we we had it there um echoing horn on the the pump kaboo for easy prizes was disgusting and you know maybe if we had put it there and then we put energy on it or something but oh that i think that was absolutely a winnable batch we just didn't get it that time but there you go that is the the arceus shadow rider archetype i'm really salty that we didn't get that particular win but i hope that you learn from the mistakes that i made and have seen uh the power of espion shutting down that sableye and and hopefully you don't you don't get the bump kaboo in the discard and we're try and have some sort of i think yeah between the pump kaboo being there and have them having all the echoing horns um maybe you throw in an extra marnie in there to disrupt their hand which we weren't able to do that entire game that could have done the trick as well but um definitely give this deck a chance and let me know if if you like it um again shout outs to i need to pull up their name uh shout outs to curly 71 uh for using the, coming up with this deck and playing it at the late night 60 and they got and I probably say this at the video, at the beginning of the video as well. Uh, Curly got sixth place. So GG's to them with this deck. Definitely has some potential. Uh, probably a better player than me can showcase what it really can do. And oh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to be salty about that last match for a long time to come. But before we go, um, I want to say thank you for watching again thank you for your support and just before we go the one thing i want to plug the one thing i want to plug more than anything you know you know about the, the youtube channel you know about the twitch streams uh i am in the process of fundraising for extra life we're going to be hosting a 24-hour marathon over on my twitch channel saturday november 5th 9 a.m eastern time my friends and family and i are going to be playing games for 24 hours straight we'll play some pokemon tcg as well probably open some packs it's going to be amazing if you would like to donate um the bitly link is in in here i'll also put the link in the description of this video 100 percent of the proceeds go towards the children's miracle network of hospitals which is a network of 100 170 hospitals that are giving 32 million treatments to kids every year it's our fifth year fundraising for for children's miracle network absolutely worthwhile and wonderful cause and i'm so proud to be a part of this community of gamers that have helped raise millions for for hospitals um across the children's miracle network and if you donate to my specific fundraiser, there are some pretty sweet rewards. You can see here, if you donate at the bronze tier, you can get a four by four print of my Rosalina spray paint art. And at the $50 tier, you can get the Rosalina and the Street Fighter. The Street Fighter one's four by six, and these are inches by the way. And then at the gold tier, you'll also get the Dirty Snorlax and the Lonely Planet painting as well. Again, link is on the screen here or you can click on the description of the video for the info all right that's it for today thank you so much for watching um let me know in the comments what you thought of this deck and i'll see you next time later wait why is my button not working my button's not working oh gosh okay we'll just get out of here later